Journalists have emotions just like everyone else. And like everyone else, they sometimes can't keep them in check. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reporters who couldn't hold back tears. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at instances where news people were overcome with emotion during on-air news reports as a result of the subject matter. Number 10. Campbell Brown, The 2010 Haiti Earthquake Natural disasters are constantly filling our news feeds with devastating stories. Sadly, in this case, CNN reported that an 11-year-old girl named Anika had become trapped under the rubble of a house following the devastating 2010 Haiti earthquake. During the broadcast, anchor Campbell Brown threw to reporter Ivan Watson, who broke the news that, despite being cut free and taken to a first aid station, Anika passed away due to her injuries. Uh, Ivan Watson uh, with us tonight with that, um, with that part of the story. Um, many, many hearts breaking for this little girl. Watson wavered slightly while delivering the piece, but the tragic news left Brown in tears and choking on her words. Number 9. Gina Silva, 7-year-old Desiree Macias, shot Gun-related violence strikes an emotional chord with both audiences and reporters. 7-year-old Desiree found herself entangled in a messy verbal altercation between adults while she was with her family at a local gas station. Stuck in the middle, she was later shot in the head in a car-to-car -car shooting as the five attackers followed the family home. Acknowledging the sheer horror of the situation, reporter Gina Silva fought back tears as she informed viewers that Desiree was in extremely critical condition, ultimately breaking her professional detachment. Sadly, Desiree did not survive the incident. And the little cousin came out and he was just saying, you know, I just want him. I just want her to come home. She's my best cousin. And it's just really hard. Yeah, that little I angel. I feel for this family. Number eight, Carrie Bickmore, the Syrian chemical attack. In April 2017, Australian current affairs program The Project shed light on the detrimental effects of exposed chemicals and gas attacks in Syria. After viewing a video package that showed people, including dozens of women and children, foaming at the mouth and physically exterminated as a result, co-host Carrie Bickmore tried to hold back the tears, but quickly gave up the fight. Sorry, I know it's... I was going to start this conversation, but I just can't see those images. I find them incredibly distressing. Visibly upset and distressed by the footage, she turned to co-host Walid Ali and questioned U.S. President Donald Trump's role. Will he act? Will he? Or is this just something that we're going to look back on? And... Uh... Ali was also lost for words. And given the gravity of the situation, no one could blame him. Number 7. Natalie Barr, The Lint Cafe Siege <laughs> This 16-hour siege became known as one of the most catastrophic events in Australia's history. On December 15th and 16th, 2014, lone gunman Mon Moniz stormed the Lint Cafe and held eight employees and ten customers hostage. By the siege's end, the gunman had shot and killed cafe manager Tory Johnson and was ultimately himself killed by police fire. But it was news of a third death, that of Katrina Dawson, a lawyer and friend of the news program, who was killed by fragments from shots fired by police that caused Sunrise reporter Nat Barr to completely lose her composure as the weight of the devastation hit her on live TV. Stop. Sandy Dawson, who, who I know and I have friends who know, she was a mother of three children. Number 6. Gloria Campos, Keontae Cook Says Thank You Take a Dallas news anchor with a big heart, add a segment that helps foster children find a new home and family, then mix in an eight-year-old orphan and you've got the recipe for a seriously heartwarming story. Anchor Gloria Campos first featured Keontae Cook on her Wednesday's Child segment in 2007 and later again in 2009. The second time was the charm, as Keontae was fostered and adopted by a loving couple and saw his life completely change for the better. In 2014, co-anchor John McKay introduced a piece bringing viewers up to date on Keontae's journey, after which the now young man walked out to hug and personally thank a tearful compost for her efforts. I can't believe it's you. Thanks so much. <laughs> thank you for this big surprise. Number 5. Lance West, Oklahoma's Wild Tornado Reporting on natural disasters can't be something you'd ever get used to. When a wild tornado ripped through the Oklahoma City suburbs, it virtually flattened neighborhoods and hit an elementary school, with catastrophic results. 
Children and teachers faced winds of up to 200 miles per hour, which left many trapped under rubble and fighting for their lives. Throwing live to the news studio, reporter Lance West couldn't contain his emotions when talking about the disaster's dire consequences and the need to literally pull young bodies from the rubble. And I understand they're going to start pulling these tiny victims out of the rubble here shortly. It's All too right, difficult. Lance. Lance, I'm so sorry. Lance, hang in there. But, uh, hang in there, my friend. Number four, Kate Baldwin, war torn Syria. The challenging footage of five year old Syrian boy Omran Daknish dominated headlines and circulated social media feeds worldwide in August 2016. After his home was bombed in the final months of the siege of Aleppo, footage captured Daknish once he was pulled from the rubble. Not only was he covered in dust and blood, he was also sitting completely alone in an ambulance. As CNN anchor Kate Baldwin shared his story and reported on the devastating effects of the Syrian civil war, the heartbroken presenter struggled to keep herself together. What strikes me is we shed tears, but there are no tears here. He doesn't cry once. That little boy is in total shock. He's stunned. Number three, Graham Satchel, the Paris terror attack vigils. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Terror attacks inspire fear, but they can also bring out the best in humanity by prompting unity and harmony in the face of evil. People come together to show their support and recognize innocent people that might have been affected by terror. It's for this reason that BBC News reporter Graham Satchel couldn't contain his emotions when sharing the uplifting stories of tributes that were flowing in for the victims of the November 2015 Paris terror attacks. The Eiffel Tower was lit up in red, white and blue, which I think is a sign of hope. Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Reporting from the scene of a Paris vigil, he highlighted the hope and positivity in the air despite the tragic circumstances. Certainly hope here in Paris, anyway, but that is back to you. Number two, Walter Cronkite, the death of John F. Kennedy. It was Friday, November 22, 1963, when John F. Kennedy, the 35th president of the United States, was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. One of the first newsmen to report on the death was legendary anchor Walter Cronkite. Cronkite was known for covering some of the biggest events of his era, but nothing would ever compare to the death of JFK. Cronkite revealed that the president had died only 38 minutes after the CBS News coverage began. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Visibly struggling to comprehend the cruel reality of the event, Cronkite's emotional quivering and removal of his glasses spoke volumes and was perfectly in tune with the shocked state of the American public. Number one, Anderson Cooper, the Orlando nightclub shooting tributes. It's no secret that American journalist Anderson Cooper is one of the highest regarded professionals in the business, with this report only solidifying that reputation. Less than 48 hours after the deadly attack where 49 people were killed and 58 were wounded at Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida, Cooper opened his program by sharing the stories, names, and ages of the victims who were lost in the tragedy. Kira Monet Murray, she recently graduated from high school, was planning to go to Mercyhurst University and play basketball. She was just 18. While reading the warming tributes, Anderson uncontrollably choked on his words, occasionally pausing and tearing up. A true testament to his professionalism, the seasoned journalist didn't stop until each person was acknowledged. We think it's important that you hear their names. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.